Hi everybody. I love close focus wide angle. It's such a cool technique. It allows us to exploit perspective, to show a near subject and make it look so much larger than its surroundings, including dive buddies or other fish or animals or a dive boat or whatever other objects are in the background. Uh, the only problem is this technique is fraught with obstacles many of which I have encountered. And what my goal here is, is to show some of the most common mistakes I have made with close focus wide angle in underwater photography. And hopefully, if you can see the mistakes I've made and I can maybe explain why I've made them, it'll help you avoid some of these mistakes, shorten your learning curve, and uh, enable you to get better pictures with your own photography. So in this first video, I'm going to explain the most common mistakes I have with lighting and close focus wide angle. So let's check it out. When shooting with available light, I shoot aperture priority and always get a good exposure. You should remember to use a smaller aperture for good depth of field and sometimes you must increase your ISO to keep a fast enough shutter speed to avoid motion blur. So if you always get a good exposure using aperture priority with available light, what problems can you have? Well, you must be aware of the position of the sun and your shadow. In general, the sun should be behind you or to the side, not in front of you or the front of your subject will be in the shadows. Of course, there are always exceptions, for, for instance, if you want a silhouette. Now, in this image, I was not going for a silhouette. I wanted to show the beautiful uh, seahorse in the foreground, but the sun was in front of me, in other words, behind the diver. The seahorse is therefore in the shadow, almost a silhouette, not what I was going for. In this image, the sun was to my left. It would have been okay if the batfish was facing left, but as it is, the body of the batfish is well illuminated, but its face is in the shadows. Very disappointing. Here, the sun was behind me as desired, but my body and camera is casting a shadow on the beautiful stargazer in the foreground. Very disappointed. Would have been a cool picture. In this image, the sun was behind me as I desired, but it didn't do any good because the tarpons in the foreground are under a ledge and in the shadows. When using strobes, I prefer two strobes for close focus wide angle to get even lighting of the foreground subject. Strobes bring color and contrast to the foreground subject. A strobe controls the foreground lighting and our shutter speed controls the background lighting. If your background on the LCD looks too dark, you can make your shutter speed slower to get a lighter background. The strobe still frees the action on the foreground to prevent motion blur of the near object. I often make the mistake of not pulling my strobes in tight enough. In this image, the beautiful colorful coral in the foreground is illuminated at the sides but not in the center. I have an 8 inch dome port for my SLR and fisheye lens and this large dome can be a problem. If I bring the strobes in close, I have to remember to keep them behind the port or they can be seen in the image. I don't have this problem when using my compact camera because my port is smaller and I can bring the, the lights in tighter and the lens is not as wide so the lights don't show up at the edge of the image. Forgetting to adjust strobe position when switching from horizontal to vertical aspect ratio, ratio is also a dumb but common problem. Here I made a really dumb mistake. My two strobes are generally above my housing in the 10 and 2 position for a typical landscape image with a horizontal aspect ratio. In this shot I wanted a vertical aspect ratio so I rotated my camera counterclockwise but I forgot to readjust my strobe position. Therefore after I rotated my camera counterclockwise both of my strobes were now to the left of the near subject and you can see that only the left side of the sponge is illuminated. This mistake seems so obvious but sure enough I made it and recently too. When you are underwater, there are so many things to think about, it's easy to forget some basic steps. Another problem is unbalanced strobe power or strobe to subject distance. For this image, I again rotated my camera counterclockwise to obtain a vertical aspect ratio, and this time I remembered to move my strobe such that they were directly above and below my camera. However, the lower strobe was much closer to the coral base than the upper strobe was to the top of the coral. Therefore, the lower part of the coral is much brighter than the upper portion, unnatural and unappealing. To mimic natural light from the sun, if anything, the top, not the bottom of the coral, should appear more illuminated. 
Another example of unbalanced strobe power or position. This time my strobes were back in the usual 10 and 2 position for a horizontal aspect ratio, but one of my strobes is farther away from the foreground subject, the coral, than the other uh, strobe, such that the lighting on the foreground subject is unbalanced or unnatural. Here I compose the orange coral to be left of center to show the diver in the background to the right. My right strobe was probably too far away from the coral, or maybe it didn't even discharge. Either way, the orange coral is not at all evenly illuminated, and you can see harsh, unpleasant shadows due to unbalanced strobe power or position. Finally, stirred up sediment. I put this in the lighting problems category because I am illuminating or lighting sediment or showing backscatter. When a subject is on the seafloor, it's important that you are very low in order to get your foreground and background subjects in the frame. This was taken with available light, no strobe, but you can still see the tremendous amount of sediment that I stirred up when settling into the sandy seafloor. Well, thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful. Uh, hopefully, by looking at some of the mistakes I have made, you will be able to avoid some of these mistakes and get better underwater pictures with your underwater photography. Thanks for tuning in.